Hello, I've just been doing research um, online to find out why doctors have affairs with their patients and why patients have affairs with their doctors, right? Now, it seems in almost every case that the doctor, whether it's male or female, is always married and they invariably have children. And this is the same for the patient, male and female. But I'm particularly thinking about the women here. The women seem to always be married and invariably have children. So we've got two married people engaging in an affair. Right. Now, what seems to happen is when the women get what you might call dumped, like just like an ordinary going out together, people just find they, they lose interest or they're fed up or whatever the reason, and so the doctor ends it. What seems to happen is this, the women then go to another doctor or a healthcare professional or somebody and claim that the doctor who they had the affair with took advantage of them, that they were vulnerable and they were, were they'd been taken advantage of. Um, there's nothing like a woman scorned, that's what I'm thinking. Because it's the women that are doing this, the women are going and confiding in somebody and then the doctor, right, is loses his license to practice, right. This is very, very serious. This is very, very serious. I feel sorry, to be honest, for these male doctors. Um, and I am also annoyed at these women who claim to be vulnerable, you know, taken advantage of by their doctors. I just don't believe it. I don't believe it because a number of them claim to have mental health issues, like they were depressed, they spoke to the doctor about an unhappy marriage, or they suffered a bereavement. Well, you know, I've had all of those, but I, even though on one level you could consider yourself vulnerable, on another level, as a woman, I don't think I'm vulnerable because I do have a voice because I'm speaking now and you can just say no. You can actually say no. These women could have just got up and walked out of the room, right? They could just get out of the room, just walk out, just get up. They might be a bit upset, but they just run out of the room and that's that, change doctors. But they don't do that. They go along with what the doctor's requesting, whether to give him all the sex or what strip or something. And then they come back for more. They're coming back for more. And then, but they're claiming, they, like, it was like they were controlled by this doctor and they had to do it. And they were vulnerable and he took advantage of them. And it's like they've got no free will. And... I'm just, this is, this is irritating me because how can women claim to be emancipated when they're not prepared to take responsibility? These are two grown adults and they're both married and they've chosen, both chosen to have an affair or nucky. They're meeting in private lanes, country lanes or going into hotels and things like that. And this is what they are consenting to do. Um, and what these women are, and, and the people that are representing them, obviously, from the legal position, are putting forward that these women are so vulnerable, and that this doctor's taken advantage of their vulnerability. And I just don't buy it. It doesn't make sense. Um, even if you make a mistake once, you don't go back and keep repeating it, do you? You don't keep repeating it. And I think, I feel sorry for the men. I feel sorry for the men in this situation. I really, really do. Men 
are generally quite shy with women. It takes an awful lot of courage to ask a woman out. Never mind, please give me a blowjob. <laughs> or anything like that. In other words, men are weighing up women and they're looking, is she up for it? That's what men are always thinking. Is she up for it? Does she, would she consent? Would she go along with it? Is this somebody who I think, you know, quite likes me and if I make the move, she will all the rest of it but that's how it is in the world women traditionally are giving the signals to the men to make the approach so a hundred years ago 200 years ago what women used to do if they were walking down the street say in the in the in, in the old good old England in the United Kingdom and they saw a man they liked there was sort of a lady what they would do would be drop their handkerchief right in front of the man that they would got their eye on and then the man would bend down and say to the lady oh you've dropped your handkerchief and then she would say oh how thank you i didn't notice i dropped my handkerchief and then would just then they would start a conversation now this was done this was a women's way of indicating to a man that she fancied him and the man would know she dropped her handkerchief because she fancies me. And then they would pick it up. But they would know that he would know that she's deliberately dropped the handkerchief in front of him because she wants to, she fancies him. Right? In the same way in a bar, a woman looks at a man and they lock eyes for just that couple of seconds. He has to make a judgment call. Is she interested? Then he'll move over across the bar and say, excuse me can i buy you a drink oh thank you that's very nice of you it's all very civilized and that but she is the one who's made the first move whether it's through locking eyes with him or dropping a handkerchief and of course in these days it gets rather lewd isn't it in the way that w women do flirt outrageously and what men are looking for is the flirting they're, they're looking for something to make the move and these doctors in these situations it's not going to be any different if you're seeing a doctor and you're giving the signal or and it could be a different ways like you're telling oh doctor you know you're wonderful and you know and you know it's something in the voice the way she's looking locking eyes with him and the way she's saying it and the inflection in the voice and the, it, he's picking it up you know, oh she fancies me or she's she, you know and then he makes his move this is how it works so whether it's in a bar or a doctor's surgery it is the women i would argue who always make the first move because men are traditionally preferred and it makes more sense because they're weighing up is it worth sticking his neck out or anything else out for this woman you see um he's weighing her up and this this is a challenge for women on how they present themselves and they behave with men actually it's all down to how women behave because um Particularly these days, where so often in different cultures, Western cultures, women swear, the way they dress, they're revealing so much flesh, the way they sit, the posture, the way they flirt, and the, the cleavage, and um, the forwardness of women, and everything, and the flirtation, and the way they're locking eyes with the man, and everything, everything. And that's men are looking for signals the whole time. And it's the women that are giving the signals. And why do women recognise this and acknowledge this? Because this itself is a power. Because women have a lot of power. Women have a lot of power. I, You might say I'm vulnerable. I'm a single woman, 60, living on my own. I have health conditions and physically not very strong. And, you know, you might say, oh, she's vulnerable. She's on her own. 60 year old woman and she's in poor health and she's unemployed and this and that, 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 that right maybe there's certain aspects of that you might say vulnerability but i don't think of myself as vulnerable i think of myself as empowered first of all i've got a functioning brain and i've got a mouth and there's such a thing as screaming there's such a thing as running there's such a thing as slapping a fella across the face. 
there's such a thing as just getting up suddenly and then just rushing out of a room. And there is such a thing that if something happens, you would eventually report it or you would immediately change doctors. If you didn't want to make a fuss, you change doctors and not see, and get yourself another GP. But if you if you if you're flattered by the the uh, him coming round and sniffing round your neck and touching your shoulder and rubbing his knee against you and all that, if you're flattered by it and you're going back for more, then to me this is consent. And I think to myself, it's not fair that these doctors get sacked. I feel sorry for the doctors. Now, the, the research I did indicated that almost the majority of doctors think it's wrong to, it's unethical, it's wrong to come on to a patient. But, you know, it depends, it, again, it depends on the situation. I think it's difficult with GPs because you, you go into a GP about all sorts of things. You could, you could be going about emotional problems, you could be going about constipation, irritable bowel syndrome, an ingrown toenail, uh, a relative has just died, you're upset. But if you were to say, see a specialist about your bunions, right, and there's a mutual attraction, what harm is it if you start if you start dating, you find another consultant who deals with bunions. And what I would do if I was in that situation, right, and say I went with bunions and I saw this consultant of, you know, consultant of consultants of bunions. And um, and he said, to, and, you know, I'm sort of giving, he obviously can tell I like him, right. And he, he said, I wondered if you would like to go out to dinner one evening. And I, the first thing I'd want to know, is he married? What would his wife think about this if he said no i'm divorced or um i would want the certificate at the at the date i would probably say bring your decree nice eye with you on to the dinner date i need to see it but what i would say well then i will need to change doctors i would change consultants but i would go ahead with it but i would change doctors but these women aren't doing that. They're staying with the doctor and having the affair. So they're not being very savvy anyway. And why aren't these doctors insisting that these ladies that they're having nooky with change the doctors? It would make more sense to just say, I'd like to go out with you, but I can't be your GP at the same time. Are you interested in going out with me? Because if we're both interested in dating, then I require you, first of all, to change your GP, change your doctor, and then we can go out and see if we hit it off. Right. Then, then the patient has got to make the mind up. What do they want from this man? Do they want him to be the doctor, or do they want, uh, or do they want it a personal relationship? right so you've got to weigh up your doctor what do you really want from this man if you can't have both then you have to decide do i want it personal or do i want to keep him as a doctor obviously you can't seem to to have both but consenting adults if you say well yes i'll change my doctor we'll sort that out and then we'll meet up in three weeks time and go out and see how we get on um but this is not happening. It's not happening like that. And the women are simply claiming vulnerability. They're saying he's taking advantage of them. I lost my mother and um, or, or, or I was bereaved or, or I was depressed or I was having marriage problems. And it's, the, 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 and it's perceived that the doctor is taking advantage of this. But you have to ask the question, is he? And I would say probably, possibly not. There's obviously an attraction. There's something going on in that interaction, in this heart-to-heart -heart talk, you know. And there's obviously something going on. And the fact that it goes on such a lot, there's so many doctors having affairs with the patients, that I don't just think, I don't think it is... I don't, you know, or we're not hearing about, I went to my G, I went to my doctor about constipation 
and we found we had so much in common that we started an affair. I haven't come across anything like that on the internet. You know, I went with irritable bowel syndrome. I went to my doctor concerning dandruff because I could get my dandruff sorted out. And then we did, we started talking, we hit it off and we started dating. No, this is not what you're hearing on the internet. What you're hearing is women claiming to be emotionally vulnerable and the doctor taking advantage of it. And this to me smacks of women trying to get their own back to the man who has re rejected them. And remember, these women are already married. This is what gets me. These women already have a man. I'm not married. I've never been married. Right. It's the women that are getting all these men. And then, I mean, I haven't had any doctor home in on me. And I'm single. So, but I'm not up for it. And, and so... The, the problem is, these doctors are homing in on these married women because it's obviously they're deducing. She's looking for it and she's up for it and she's open to it. The women are giving the signals, but women are saying, no, 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 I'm disempowered, I'm vulnerable. And women aren't. Women aren't. Because women have learnt over the centuries how to use particularly their sexual power to get a man and to keep a man and to blackmail a man through their through their simply being women the person who is really vulnerable in this situation i would argue is not the patient it's the doctor and the doctor is the one who really in this situation isn't is taking an awful risk because the problem is he he has mis missed he's he's actually getting involved with the wrong sort of women because he's getting they're getting involved with women who already have a man but they have such a big ego that when their lover disposes of them they don't think to themselves well i've got a husband and children so what have i got to complain about no they're angry Somebody like me might have something to complain about because I'm single. So you would think it's more devastating if a single woman has an affair with a with a doctor and he dumps her. Then it's more devastating because you're single and you think, well, you, you haven't got anybody and you're very hurt. But the question is, would I do that myself and jeopardise a doctor's career? No, I wouldn't. You look at these men and they've worked hard all their life and they work them as ways up to consultant status and they take exams after exams and exams and these women come along and I think it's purely selfish and spiteful. Uh, things haven't worked out, the men drop them for whatever reason. The women again won't take responsibility and say, well, we just got tired of each other. He got tired of me, maybe he realised... You know, you go out with somebody, you, what you have, maybe if it's just sexual, maybe you find there isn't a connection after all. Like a one night stand, you go out, you might date a few times, you fancy each other, you sleep with each other, and then you find, well, she, yeah, we, we, it was nice in bed, but we haven't got really much in common, and it, you don't want to take it any further. It's like the sex was good, but there's nothing else. And even if you're having an affair, a doctor might, or any man might think, well, it was nice while it lasted, but, you know, she's not, you know, I've, no, I'm not really that interested. I don't want to continue seeing her. And why shouldn't a doctor make that decision? And it's perfectly valid and reasonable, just like any other man. But women in this situation won't accept it. They won't accept it like, an ordinary man, they, 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 could, they could perhaps accept it. Well, he's, he's obviously, it hasn't worked out. And that's that, and they're very upset. But because he's a doctor, they're using his status and they feel so angry that they have been dumped by this doctor. This, and it's a status. And I think it's all, also about the status of the doctor that, that perhaps it's the humiliation that they've been in awe of this doctor, the status. Oh, this doctor, very clever, has taken an interest in ordinary me. And they're flattered, because this is what comes across a lot from the women. As you're reading, these women are so flattered, this consultant, this neurologist, this whatever, is interested in them. I'm just an ordinary person with um, 
you know, upset because my mother's died and he's really interested in me and he's very handsome. And they're already married and they're flattered at the status that this man with such power and learning and, you know, consultant and he's on the internet and, you know, look him up and they're interested in me and then so flattered and then they get rejected and then they get angry and they're scorned. How dare you reject me? Um, and this is what it boils down to. And so the person who's really vulnerable here is these doctors. I really feel sorry for these men. Um, and so it's it's about if a doctor is going to have an affair with a patient, he's got to really... It's, a very, it's very, very risky for him because he's got to think, is this the kind of woman that if it doesn't work out, is she going to spite me? Because he might think he's married... She's married, and he might think to himself, well, she's already got a husband. If it doesn't work out between us, it doesn't matter. And I c it sounds quite reasonable, doesn't it? You think, well, what have I got to lose? I've already got a husband. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't matter. Right? I've already got somebody. It's just a bit of extra, and it doesn't work out. But clearly, it's, this is not what's happening with these women. Because they're all really offended and annoyed, and are determined to spite that doctor. They're determined to do it. And the, you get these doctors writing to these patients, some of these patients, and saying, please don't, please deny this allegation. Please just say there's nothing going on between us. And the reason why the doctor's asking this is because he doesn't want to lose his job. He doesn't want to stop practicing as a doctor. And I don't think that's unreasonable. I think it's perfectly reasonable. Because we're, we're talking about a, a profession that he is, he loves, he loves being a doctor. He loved, he spent all his life working hard, getting all these exams. And this woman is, she's out to destroy him. And she knows exactly what she's doing. And she's out to destroy him simply because he's said it hasn't worked out between us. And I think it's not unreasonable for a doctor to, to then write to that lady and say, please don't report me. We had something going on between us. You know, I felt it wasn't worth pursuing. And please, can't you deal with this as an adult? You already have a husband anyway. Why are you trying to totally destroy my life? Because that's what, that's what it will be for these doctors. These doctors, it's their life. The whole life is their profession. It's, it's everything for them. And it's not just the marriage. I think for these, a lot of these men, you know, they... You know, it's like any profession, you work really, really hard. And these men love what they're doing. They love their job. They love it. They're dedicated. They're totally dedicated to work and they love it. And you've got this spiteful woman determined to get them so that they cannot practice medicine again. I think it's the lowest of the low of these women. And how can you call yourself emancipated and free when you behave in such a spiteful way and you can't be grown up about rejection because this is about rejection and it's pride and you already have a husband woman and yet you're prepared to spite a man um i mean i would just deny it if i had an affair with a ma with a with a doctor and somebody found out and they somebody said are you having an affair i'd say no absolutely no because i would know that that person would lo would lose their job they would lose they would lose their license i just wouldn't do it i it, and i i think it's very revealing because it reveals really at heart what kind of person they are so the doctor needs to really be dispassionate with this person this patient that he fancies or she fancies and says do i think this person if they were rejected by me because it didn't work out would they deny that there was ever anything going on between us? So this is about good judgment on the part of the the doctor. Now, there was a case recently of a neurologist, right? Very attractive. You see all his photographs in the paper. Very, very attractive in his 40s. And what it was, this patient went to him for sweating, right? But so he'd been seeing this woman for sweating 
He's a consultant neurologist. I didn't know neurologists dealt with sweating. It must have been pretty bad if she goes to a neurologist over sweating, a consultant. So she's seeing him for eight years over sweating. And it's just professional, you know, just seeing him every three months, every six months, as you do with something like that, monitoring the condition. And then suddenly she's saying she's going to America and he says, oh, I'm going to America. And then something, there's obviously some conversation, you know, you don't, obviously you're not getting all the details on the internet. There's obviously more going on. And th then the affair starts. Uh, he sends a naked picture of himself in it, on his bed, uh, uh, I, that would put me off. I'd, I wouldn't want to, to do with a man who sent me naked pictures of himself. Ugh, it's horrible. So he sent a naked picture of himself on N, on the NHS email account, National Health Service account. Uh, I mean, it, I mean, if, if I if that arrived from any doctor, I'd, I'd put me off him. Even if I fancied him, I'd say, oh, oh no, no, I'm not interested. I don't want an affair with you because. I, any man, I, I just, I, I'm just old-fashioned. I hate anything like that. You know, don't send me things. I don't want to see you. No, no. I hate it. Right. But anyway, she liked it. This is, you know. Anyway, so for some reason, the NHS divided, decided to investigate him over something else, and they found this picture on his e on his National Health Service email account of his. Well, we don't know how much he revealed. But he was in bed, so he sent it naked to this anyway. So, and anyway, it all comes to a head, and he'll probably lose his license. But this is two consenting adults, and you wonder what well, I find this extraordinary because he was seeing her for eight years uh, just as a doctor professionally, and then suddenly, after eight years something happens that's extraordinary i can only presume he felt that the sweating was under control because i couldn't think anything more off-putting to i mean really you know i wouldn't expect if i had if i was suffering from excessive sweating and i went to a gorgeous hunky consultant and i said i was suffering from excessive sweating i wouldn't expect him to hit on me or be e even the slightest bit interested in me no matter how good looking he was because i would have thought as a woman excessive sweating would put him off i mean obviously as a doctor he has to deal with it right so he's not affected by it this is his job he deals with the excessive sweating and it's all very clinical but when he's off work does he really want to be seeing a woman suffering from excessive sweating no because i wouldn't want to have an affair with a with a man who had excessive sweating i know that might be considered prejudice to all the people that over sweat in the world but i wouldn't want to date a man who suffered from excessive sweating if he just told me on you know match.com and i do suffer from excessive sweating that would be it i just you know i'm sorry it's probably terribly a lot of people will be so what a terrible intolerant woman you are and it's a disability and why are you against this disability of excessive sweating and you can't help it but um, i did once work with a lady who suffered from excessive sweating it's hot, very hard it's you know it's very hard to be with, intimate with somebody with excessive sweating isn't it next to them but he obviously got this excessive sweating under control very much after eight years and then it it it, it started he's going to the tribunal this neurologist and he's having to say it's all his fault about this affair but it's not all his fault because it, they're two consenting adults she's married she's married she's married she's been seeing him for eight years as a professional doctor over excessive sweating and then suddenly it turns a bit personal after eight years and she's up for it obviously sending naked photographs she's saying thank you she's very pleased with it she's glad to receive it and they they're having an affair so why is he why is he being blamed for this um but apparently the medical world are saying that he's he's taking advantage of a vulnerable woman but what's vulnerable she's got excessive sweating <laughs> this is not a woman who is under 
he's treating as a psychiatrist. He's not a psychiatrist dealing with somebody with bipolar or schizophrenia or anything like that. He is not a therapist, you know. He is a doctor dealing with her excessive sweating. This is the professional relationship, right, of seeing her every six months over her excessive sweating. Now, I think he did advise her to get another doctor for the excessive sweating, but she didn't do it, which she should have done, because really he should have insisted and say, well, if we're going to start seeing each other, you need to find another consultant to manage your excessive sweating, because I presume after eight years he would have it under control, because he wouldn't be seeing her otherwise. If it was, you know chronic severe excessive sweating that he couldn't manage or control as a consultant then obviously i presume he wouldn't be going to bed with her if it was that bad but he clearly got it under control and uh, uh, he clearly had no prejudices against anybody who sweated and he was how how much you still sweated we don't know how much he was able to control it we don't know about the medication um we don't, we don't know anything that's going on, but it's, it's um, I, I'm just amazed that any man would, would want to have an affair with a woman with excessive sweating, because I don't have excessive sweating and nobody's interested in me. And maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe that's what I lack. Maybe I should have excessive sweating. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe if I had excessive sweating, I wouldn't be still single at the age of 60. But I smell lovely, I wear perfume and it gets me nowhere. So, you know, since I was 12 I've been wearing perfumes that are supposed to entice men and get them interested in me. What's that beautiful smell? And oh, is that you? Oh, you know, I was so... I, from the age of 12, I was a sucker for all the television adverts and advertising that if I wore a particular perfume, I would be able to attract a man. But it seems that's not necessarily the case. It, it could be you're suffering from body odour and you could still get a man and I never knew it. So why am I wearing all these deodorants and Gucci and everything? Because I'm f really failed. And maybe what I should wear at my next consultation with my cardiologist, maybe I should just go smelling maybe i shouldn't bath but i'll have no shower i'll just stop showering the week before i see him and no deodorant nothing i'll probably stop washing my hair for a week not wash my hair and i'll turn up greasy hair stinking the armpits oh and i'll have the same blouse that i've been wearing for a week and i won't change my knickers for a week and he'll smell the bo and he'll go wow wow would you like to go out to dinner maybe this is it um um and so um but i am annoyed with these women because i'm annoyed that they're making these men suffer this is all about spite i do there's no evidence that men behave like this men who have affairs with female doctors don't seem to be spiting the female doctor it's the women and I, this is what's coming across over and over again. It's women that are spiting the doctors. And I'm sorry to admit, I, I, I think I have seen this aspect in me once on one occasion many years ago when a man rejected me and I felt very spiteful and I felt I wanted to get my own back but that's a horrible quality and in the end I gave myself a good talking to this is not the way to behave this is not the way to behave and um and so these 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 are these are my thoughts and um I hope this has been interesting for you. And so for any man out there, you know, if, you see, even if the, if the woman is single, even if she's single and you're a doctor and she's single and you're single, you're both single, it could still happen that she would report you if you ended the relationship. So it's a very... It, it, so I probably would... The, the, the message for a single doctor, if you're a single doctor and you're asking a patient out who's single, you really need to ask yourself, 
is there a possibility or any likelihood that this person, if I, if it didn't work out between us, could report me? Out of, simply out of spite. Out of spite. And I think from what I've read on the internet, it is more than likely they, they, they could do. So perhaps doctors would be advised to stick to nurses. Really. And just stick it there. Is it just stick to um, keeping it within the profession? Because um, I remember when I trained as a psychiatric nurse, I had a little fling with an orthopaedic surgeon, but nothing actually happened because I went to bed with him. He was on call. He was an orthopaedic registrar. And what happened? The phone rang and he had to go to an emergency and the, the relationship was not consummated. So that was that is the extent of me having an affair with a with a with a doctor, in that it wasn't consummated because he was on call. But this goes on a lot in hospitals, like when they're on call, um, because if a doctor's on, it, you do get quiet periods. And this was about one in the morning, and then it got busy. Somebody came in, and that was it. And um, that that that. That was it. So I just, in the end, I got up because he didn't, he hadn't come back from the ward. I thought, well, that was it. So nothing actually happened. So that's been my experience.